Hey guys, thanks for joining us online today. We are so glad that you stopped by to see what God's doing here at Family Church. Now, if this message or any other message that you've listened to has changed your life in any way, we want to hear about it. So email us at changedlife at familychurch.tv. Now, if you'd like to become a deeper part of what God's doing here at Family Church, you can help out by giving online. Just go to our homepage, click on the Give tab, and follow the instructions. Thanks again for joining us today. Before we start today, I want, I want, to, um, I want to say something. God, God does not want you to live frustrated. So if you're here this morning and you're frustrated, I want you to know that that's not God's plan for your life. God wants you to live fulfilled. And there's a path that we can take to get you there. And we're going to talk about that path this morning. In fact, we're going to, today we're going to talk about the will of God versus the wheel of God. Now, if you have a thick Ozarks accent like I do, that's hard to say. <laughs> so we're probably going to get that mixed up a little bit this morning, but you'll know what I mean. The will of God, everybody say the will of God. Versus the wheel of God. Everybody say the wheel of God. God. Okay, the, the will of God versus the wheel of God. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 18. I want to begin by reading a very familiar Bible story and, and then we're going to um, jump right into the teaching this morning. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 1 says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at a wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you Israel as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. And obviously that's a very familiar Bible story that we have read many times. And that Bible story is going to teach us some great things this morning about how to live a fulfilled life and how to get rid of some of the frustration that you may have brought with you into this place today. And, and um, I know that God has, God has big things in mind for you and he's trying to get you ready for those big things. Now, the wheel of God, see, it's hard to say with my accent, the will of God and the wheel of God are not the same. And the problem is a lot of people believe that they are. And as a result, they live a good portion of their lives frustrated. You know, you think about all the things in life that frustrate us. Do you have any people in your life that frustrate you? Are you sitting beside them? <laughs> Think about all the circumstances in our lives that frustrate us. And maybe you have some things going on right now that are really, really frustrating you. There are even times when we get frustrated with our church and, and uh, there have been times in my life, if I'm being honest, where, where I was frustrated with God. And I think that during those seasons, God was probably frustrated with me. And so life can be very frustrating. And, and my hope this morning is to, is to really just show you um, how that the will of God and the wheel of God are different. And I want to pull those things apart. Now, you need to know that God loves you very much. And that God's plan for your life is still intact, even if things aren't going like you planned them right now. And I think that we forget that that, that you have a plan for your life, but God has a purpose for your life. And those are very different. You have a plan for your life, but God, God has a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. And so let's jump right in. Number one, what is the, the will of God? What is the will of God? Well, that's not a one sentence answer. The scripture says that God's will consist of many different things. And I made a list of those things this morning. The will of God consists of things like following the scripture, 
not being conformed to the world, giving thanks, doing good, everyone coming to Christ, and you finding your ministry. Those are all things in the scripture that talk about the will of God. Now, if you want to know what the will of God looks like in the life of a person, all you have to do is, is look at Jesus. Because Jesus was God's will walking. Jesus was God's will walking. And if you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus showed us how to deal with the lost. He showed us how to handle temptation. Jesus showed us how to love our enemies. Jesus showed us uh, how to put God first. And the list goes on and on and on and on of all of the things that, that Jesus showed us. And so God's will is connected to your journey here on the earth. So what is the wheel of God? The wheel of God prepares you for that journey. So we have the will of God and that's our journey and the time that we spend navigating around this planet and all the things that we do. But in order for us to do the things that God has put us here to do successfully, we have to spend some time on the wheel of God. Now, that's not very exciting um, when you think about what that entails. And so I want to share with you this morning some of the things that you can expect whenever you submit your life to um, the wheel of God. And this is, this is very, very important that we understand this. Now, the will of God always begins on the wheel of God. The will of God always begins on the wheel of God. And so just like the potter has to put the clay on the wheel so that he can shape it into whatever it's supposed to be. God is currently shaping you and God is currently shaping family church and that's the good news. God is shaping you, not bending you or breaking you, but God is shaping you. God is shaping your life God is shaping our church. Now, a lot of people are frustrated with God because in their minds, their plans aren't coming together. Maybe it's not happening fast enough for them. Or maybe they feel like they're being passed over. When the truth is, they are on God's wheel and God is currently shaping them for something that he sees that they are to do in accordance with his will. God is shaping you. God is shaping you. God spent a number of years shaping me for this assignment. And God is shaping you for things that maybe you don't even know about right now. And, and, that's, and that's good news. And so the question this morning is this. Will you work with the potter while the potter works on you? We're going to find out. Will you work with the potter while the potter works on you? Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's a list there that's often referred to as the hall of faith. And, and if you read Hebrews chapter 11, and I suggest you do that today, you can read about people like Noah, people like Abraham, um, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Gideon, Samson, and, and many of the prophets, they're all listed there in Hebrews chapter 11. And one of the things that every single one of those people had in common was they all spent some time on God's potter's wheel being shaped for their journey. Now, they didn't just get in Hebrews chapter 11 by accident. There was a, there was a journey that, that God took them on. And it's the same journey that God is taking us on. And interestingly enough, God used all the adversity that they experienced in life to help with their shaping. And so I want to ask you a question this morning. What if what is currently aggravating you is actually shaping you? What if who is aggravating you is currently shaping you? You know, I think David was shaped a whole lot more by Goliath than he ever was by those in his fan club. I think he was shaped a whole lot more by uh, King Saul 
than he ever was by those in his fan club. And so I think sometimes we think, you know, that God is putting us through these aggravating, frustrating experiences that we don't like and, and we really just want to jump out of that. And and the whole time what we think is aggravating us is actually shaping us and getting us ready for the future that God has for us. Listen, I don't know what God's future is for you, but whatever God has planned, you want that. That's what you want in your life. It's good. It's a good plan. And for you to get it, God has to get you ready for it. And that's, that's the hard part sometimes. Now, in our Bible story... Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house and, and God is about to uh, give him an illustrated sermon. So he goes down there and he sees a potter and the potter is working on a wheel and, and the wheel is, is turning and, and spinning. And so God told Jeremiah to watch the potter because what the potter was doing with the clay was the same thing that God was doing with the nation of Israel and it was the same thing that God was doing with him. Now I will take that one step further and say that what the potter was doing with the clay is also the same thing that God is trying to do with you. And it's also the same thing that God is trying to do with me. You follow me this morning? God is currently shaping us and molding us and making us into whatever it is that he needs us to be. Now, let me give you a little bit of history. Remember, God said to to Jeremiah, he said, what I'm doing with this clay is the same thing I'm doing to the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel was powerful as long as they stayed on the wheel of God. Because the will of God always led them into the will of God. If you want to know God's will for your life, you have got to be committed to spending some time on God's will. Did you catch that? Everybody's always running around wanting to know what the will of God is. I just don't know what the will of God is for my life. Well, the will of God always begins on the will of God. As God is shaping you and molding you and making you and preparing you for whatever the future has. And so as long as the nation of Israel stayed on the wheel of God, they did some incredible things. You can go back and read about that in the Old Testament when they were on the, on the wheel of God. They um, defeated kingdoms that were mightier than they were. Um, they destroyed fortified cities like Jericho. Um, They were always eating the best of the land anytime they were on the wheel of God. But as soon as they got off the potter's wheel, they would immediately go back into chaos and confusion and survival. That's a fairly big difference. Defeating enemies more powerful than they, taking fortified cities, eating the best of the land. On the other side, chaos confusion, and just a lot of things that weren't going very well for them. And it all hinged on one thing. Would they submit to the will of God as he was molding and bending and shaping their lives? Now, I I don't understand it all, but I do know that sometimes like clay is bent on a wheel to fit the potter's design, God will use everything that happens in your life good and bad, to fit his design. See, some of you are here this morning, most of you are here this morning, and you've had some really bad things happen in your life. Anyone have some things that you wish hadn't had happened? And sometimes the only good thing in all of those bad things is that God will use them for your good down the road. He will. He, he obviously will. So God will use those good things that, that maybe you didn't like and he will cause those things to work together for your good. Now one thing that I think is interesting and, and I've read this story a lot of times and I really didn't pick up on it until um, a couple of weeks ago. One of the things that I think is interesting is that the clay was marred and the Hebrew word for marred means ruined, that the clay was marred 
while in the hands of the potter. That's heavy. Have you ever felt like that your life was marred while you were doing your best to stay in the hands of the potter? You went through a bad divorce. Maybe the doctor gave you news that you weren't planning on. One of your kids kind of went off the rails. I was going to say like a crazy train. I don't know why I was going to say that, but. <laughs> Have you ever been in the hands of the potter and felt like life was ruined? That it, that it was marred? And the scripture says that the clay was marred while in the hands of the potter. And a lot of times when someone's life kind of goes off the rails, we, we're like Job's friends. And we say, this wouldn't happen to you if you were living for God. But the truth is, sometimes bad things can really happen to you even if you are living for God. Because the clay was marred while in the hands of the potter. And sometimes that's what happens to us in life. We get marred while we're in the hands of the potter and thank God that, that we are in the hands of the potter because he will take those ruined things and make something useful out of those and we're going to see that in a minute. Now, I think that a lot of times if the clay could talk to the potter, I, I, I think the clay would say to the potter, would you please just leave me alone? You're killing me. Can't you see that I've already been through enough? And I think if the potter could talk to the clay, he would say to the clay, would you please just be quiet and do, let me do my work? Because I'm trying to make something out of you in spite of what has happened to you. Because the clay was marred in the hands of the potter and the clay's like, please just stop. I'm, I'm hurting. I, I've, I've been through enough. I've had enough trauma in my life. And the potter's just like, would you please just let me work on you? Would you please just let me do my job here? Because I'm trying to make something out of you in spite of what has happened to you. And the potter, the potter loves the clay, um, but the clay doesn't know it because all the clay knows is the thumbs of the potter going in. <laughs> and I think it's that way sometimes in our lives as well. Listen guys, you never get to the place where God stops bending you, shaping you, molding you. You never get to the place where God stops that. God will use both the good and the bad things in life to do that. And you may say, well, why? Because his purpose is bigger than your plan. See, you have I'm sure that all of you have plans. Something out there in the future that you're looking toward. Maybe it's, you know, uh, getting a different job or, you know, finding a special person to spend your life with or, um, you know, maybe just getting healthy or maybe it's, you know, ministry or something related to the church. And, and we all have this plan. But God's purpose for your life is bigger than your plan. And, and I was um, doing some research this week on uh, pottery making. And there's a whole lot of information about making pottery. So I'll, I'll just kind of give you the, the, the highlights this morning. Um, I found out that a potter can only work with clay that is soft. And so there's such a thing as hard clay and there's such a thing as soft clay. And I think we can understand hard clay because we live in Missouri and here we call that hard pan. You can't just go out in the yard and dig a hole. You need a crowbar to dig a hole in Missouri. Now, where's Pastor Kevin? Where he's from in Iowa, you could just go out in the yard and, right, and just dig all the way down. You can't do that here because the ground's too hard. So there are two kinds of clay. There's hard clay and there's soft clay. And, and a potter can only work with soft clay. Now the interesting thing is that a lot of times soft clay will start out as hard clay. And so what's the process of turning hard clay into soft clay? Well, for days, the potter has to pour water on the clay. And then for days, he has to pound it. And so to turn 
hard clay into soft clay, it has to be drowned and pound. <laughs> and when God speaks to you about something and you don't listen, thank goodness he doesn't just write you off. No, he will drown and pound you. And thank God he does. Thank God he doesn't just say, oh, well, look at James, this big old lump of hard clay. <laughs> He'll never be good for anything. No. Thank God that when God speaks to James and he doesn't listen, that God's like, okay, I'm going to drown and pound you, boy. <laughs> you ever feel like God has drowned and pound you? I mean, we have a loving Heavenly Father, and He is, and man, His mercies are new every morning, and thank, His grace is big, bigger than, his, his, his grace is bigger than any sin you'll ever commit. But let me tell you, when you commit your life to Him, and, and you're ready for greater things, He will put you on His wheel, and He will do whatever He has to, to get you in a position to use you, even if it is drown and pound you. And I can tell you that God has drowned and pound me on more than one occasion. And I never liked it, but I did like the result. And so to get the clay soft, the potter has to first drown it, and then he has to pound it. <laughs> so that he can use it. Now, sometimes the potter's wheel is smooth and fun to watch. And you can see it all coming together, and you can see everything you know, taking shape and in life, you know, life is smooth like that sometimes. Everything just kind of effortlessly flows together. We have seasons like that. Thank God for those seasons. But at other times, the potter's wheel feels more like, like the tilt-a-whirl ride at the fair. Anyone ever ride a tilt-a-whirl? Like you're going this way and all of a sudden stop and it starts going this way. So you're just spinning. You're spinning in this direction and then it stops and then you're spinning in the other direction. And sometimes life is like that. Sometimes it's just smooth and you can see it all coming together and you can see the pot of working and it's just beautiful and awesome. And at other times it feels more like the tilt the world right at the fair. But the good news is, is that whether it's spinning out of control or whether it's smoothly, spinning smoothly, it's all for a result that will be good for you. <laughs> Because God has something good for you and for your life. Now, someone needs to hear what I'm about to say this morning. When God has someone close to you on his potter's wheel because they have been marred by their own bad choices, stop trying to rescue them because God is trying to shape them into what you've been praying for. I know it's hard to see them when their life is just kind of spinning out of control but sometimes you have to let that happen. Right, Roger? Right, Jared? <laughs> Can I share a little bit? It's okay? Yeah. I remember a conversation I had with your dad. And you were in jail. And he said, I'm leaving him there. <laughs> and I said, high five. <laughs> you think you'd be sitting here if your dad kept rescuing you and enabling you? I don't. So, Roger... Air high five. Here we go, buddy. When God has someone close to you on his wheel and he is spinning them and turning them and shaking them down, you need to let God do his work. Because God is trying to shape them into what you've been praying for. Now, let's, let's move on this morning. I, I do have some other things I want to get to. What does the wheel of God do? Well, in short, the wheel of God prepares you for the will of God. The wheel of God prepares you for the will of God. Um, how many of you would agree that just like clay gets lumpy and needs to be worked, sometimes we get a little lumpy in how we are approaching life or maybe certain people, or even specific situations. We get a lump in our attitude sometimes. 
And I have to be really careful because, you know, if someone has a lump in their attitude about Chris, they can pass that on to me even though I don't know Chris. And no one does, by the way, I don't think. I'm just using you for an example. But how many of you know we, we can get a lump in our attitude sometimes? And when that happens, God has a remedy. And it's called the wheel. <laughs> I mentioned earlier how God is, is, you know, a shaping family church. And not just family church, but every church. And, uh, you know, I think we can even get a little lumpy sometimes in how we approach church. So we can get a little lumpy sometimes in life. And we can get a little lumpy sometimes in church. And you know what, guys? It's hard to be shaped into something new if we're always telling the potter just to shine us up instead of reshaping us. I think, that's, I think that's where we miss it. I really do. I think, I think we want to come in here and just kind of be shined a little bit rather than be reshaped. But God knows that, that shining us won't get us in a position where he can use us. He has to be able, he has to be able to reshape our lives and we have to be okay with that. Now, so here's where we are. God will use his wheel to reshape us but God will also use his wheel to get us ready for our next assignment. Now, this is really important. When God starts shaping you, you're not always going to understand the process. You know, earlier, I, I mentioned a guy by the name of Moses. And it was always God's will for Moses to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. But in order for that to happen, Moses had to spend 40 years on God's wheel being shaped for the job. So God always intended for him to do it, but God had to be allowed to do some work on him. And some people jump off the wheel whenever it gets uncomfortable, and then they will complain because they don't have a ministry. If you want a ministry, stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Let God shape you and mold you and make you into whatever you're supposed to be. Now, not only that, Whenever you step out and you begin drawing nearer to God, guess what's going to happen? The wheel is going to start spinning faster. And God is going to say, all right, you're, you're ready to go deeper. Then let's speed this wheel up and knock some of the rough edges off of you. And so guys, whenever you say, God, use me, you need to understand that you are telling God to put you on the wheel and get you ready for use. And that's a big statement. If you've ever prayed, God, use me, then what you're actually saying is, God, put me on your wheel and begin working on me so that I can be fit for use. And God will do that if you give him permission. Now, a clay pot never starts off that way. It always starts off as a lump that needs a lot of work. And I can speak for myself this morning when I say that I'm a lump that needs a lot of work. How about you? I am. Man, I, 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 I've been doing this for a long time. I've, I've been pastoring for a long time. I've been a Christian for a long time. And, and I, I, I'm still a lump some days that needs a lot of work. And, and I'm so thankful that God's willing to work with me. So when you're, when you're on his wheel, 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 you will always be in his will. Um, I want to close with this. There's one other thing that I think is really interesting. When you're on the wheel, when you're on the wheel, you're also under the watchful eye of the potter. I was watching some videos of people making pottery. And I, one thing I noticed is that the potter was very focused on what he was working on. He was never, you know, working and looking back over his shoulder to talk to the people that were behind him, he was very focused on what he was working on. And so when you're on the wheel of God, you're also under the watchful eye of the potter. The potter is giving you his full attention. Like God is, God is giving you his full attention. And a good potter will take that vessel right to the point of breakdown and then he will stop. 
Because he knows that it's the curves and the contours that create the most beauty. So you may be here this morning and you may feel like that God is cutting deep lines into you. You may feel like that God is taking you almost to the point of, of breaking you. But I can tell you, if you will trust him, and if you will stay on the wheel, God is, God is shaping you and molding you for something greater than you could have ever imagined or thought of. And it's difficult at the time when the wheel is spinning, and you, you just feel dizzy. But the dizziness that you're experiencing, listen, is getting you ready for something that maybe you don't even know is coming yet. Anytime that God is molding you or shaping you, it's for his purpose. Whether you see it or whether you don't. And you're just getting yourself ready to do that. One last thing that I want to say this morning before we close. Have you ever felt... Um, bent out of shape? Have you ever said that? I just feel so bent out of shape right now. Well, anytime you feel bent out of shape, where do you think you go to get bent back into shape? The club, the bar, where? Okay, the wheel. Anytime a person bends you out of shape, anytime a circumstance bends you out of shape, anytime your job bends you out of shape, anytime you bend yourself out of shape, anytime you feel bent out of shape, your first response shouldn't be, why is this happening to me? Your first response should be, God, put me back on your wheel. Get me back in shape. Because God will do that. All right, we're going to stop right there. You can stand. Musicians are coming this morning. How many of you want to be shaped by God? <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> I do. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful for this good day. Thankful, God, for the people that are in this place and, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives. And I know that there are seasons in life that are frustrating and there are seasons in life that are even a little bit aggravating and maybe we don't like it or we don't understand it. But, God, I do know this. I do know that no matter what season we are in, you're ultimately going to use that season for our good. And so, Lord, today, as we uh, approach the end of this service, I, I just pray today, God, that you would search our hearts, examine our hearts. Lord, see where we are. Maybe, Lord, maybe, maybe we do feel a little bent out of shape this morning. Maybe life is kind of, kind of feels a little crooked and warped. And uh, Lord, maybe, maybe this morning we need to just put ourselves back on that wheel and say, God, mold me, shape me, bend, bend me until I get in a position where you can use me. Take the, take the hard clay of my life and make it soft. I'm just thankful today, God, that you're able to do that. You can take those hard things and you can use them for our good. So Lord, this morning, just speak, God, into, in, into uh, every situation represented here. Lord, let people know that you love them, that your purpose, that your plan for them is still intact, even if life isn't going as planned right now. God, I'm just thankful for that. I'm grateful today in this place, in Jesus' name. I want to ask you a question this morning. If you just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you would, just so that you're shut off from what's happening around you. If you're here this morning and you do feel like that um, life has... Life has bent you a little bit out of shape and, and, and maybe you're having a hard time seeing how that God could use any of it 
for his purpose, but you want, you want to see that and you want God to use these things that have been frustrating you and aggravating you and uh, maybe even moving you a little bit farther from him. You want to see God use those things to, to move you closer to him, to, to bend and shape you in his direction for his use. If that's you this morning, can I just see your hand real quick? I want to pray for you today. Awesome. Thank you. I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray right now for every lifted hand. And, and God, I know that, that sometimes life just kind of goes in a thousand directions and we feel like we're on that tilt-a-whirl ride. But God, what if it's not a tilt-a-whirl ride? What if it's the potter? What if it's the wheel? What if it's the potter spinning us and shaping us and molding us and making us? What if it's the potter teaching us to trust him? What if it's the potter working the lumps out of our attitudes? What if it's the potter getting us ready so that we can be a vessel of honor that he can do big things with down the road? What if our brokenness is actually taking us into usefulness? So Lord, today I just, I pray for every lifted hand and I pray God that whatever it is that, that you're doing, God, that you would just be allowed to do it. God, that you would, that you would take the, the lumps of our lives and Lord, maybe even the things that, the cracks and Lord, all those things that, the, the marring that the scripture talked about, the, the vessel was ruined, but it was in the potter's hands and yet at the same time it felt ruined. And the scripture says that the potter took that ruined vessel and he made it into another vessel as, as seemed fit to him. And Lord, I know that that's exactly what you do. You don't allow us to be ruined so that we can be thrown away. God, you sometimes allow certain things in our lives to be ruined so that you can do something new in us, something bigger and better, something that we may not have ever even imagined or anticipated. And so God, we give you permission here today at Family Church, not only to shape our lives, but God, we give you permission this morning to shape our church and the direction of it. Lord, you are the potter, we are the clay. We don't get to vote. Lord, we get to just trust you while you work. And I'm thankful for that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.